The ANC Provincial Executive Committee, that's the PEC in Gauteng, has disagreed with its Integrity Commission's recommendation to suspend Kadani Mithlangu and Brian Thlongwa. While the ANC says it is concerned about its reputation, some of its frontline leadership have been implicated in wrongdoing, whether in their capacity as business people or as government officials. Um, other than its uh, deep-rooted challenges of factionalism, the organization continues to struggle with perceptions of corruption and its inability to deal with it. Joining us now in studio, we've got ANC veteran and the chair of the Integrity Committee. That, of course, is George Mashamba. Mr. Mashamba, thank you for coming in. Good to have you here in studio. Thank you. So you were appointed in August. It's been, I imagine, a very busy time for you. How has it been um, for the committee? We were appointed in August, but well, we started functioning, I think, uh, two weeks ago because uh, by the time we were appointed, the ANC had not put their things in place. For instance, the terms of reference only got them not, not long. And uh, we met for the first time two weeks ago. And uh, last weekend, we met because we had to deal with the VBS thing. Yeah, yeah. At the so workshop. Mm. So it's been, it's been a very busy time for you. And, and every time you put one issue to rest, another issue crops up. So let's, let's just um, talk about the business at hand now. And we'll start off with looking into uh, the two health MEC, well, Brian Tlongwe and Kedani Mithlangu. Talk to us about this report that came out. The report didn't come from the National Integrity Commission. It came from the Gauteng Provincial Integrity Commission. So it's, it's not our report, or it is, we have not yet received it yet. So you haven't even received that as yet? No, not yet. Okay, so it's a completely different, uh, a, a different organization to what you are looking into? Yeah, well, that it was a provincial issue. Sometimes they refer them to the, to the national, but this has not been referred to us. Okay, so this hasn't even been referred to you yet. However, the VBS issue has been referred it's to It's been referred to us. Okay, so when we look into the VBS issue, and of course a lot of people saying, no, this is uh, uh, particularly those that have been implicated, and I'll, I'll just name Daniel Caesar as one of them, the uh, ANC Limpopo treasurer, coming out and wanting to contest this very much so. So talk to us about the VBS issue. I want to clarify certain things because I've been appearing on uh, radio, whatever, and so on and so on. Because out there there's a confusion that we, all sorts of things had to be done by the Integrity Commission. For instance, if we, to, if we were to have a criminal proceedings, that would be a state thing. If the ANC would want to discipline, maybe if the data rises, that would be a dismal committee. If the ANC wanted, say, to recall certain people, that would be the, what we call the Deployment Committee. The IC what is concerned with the question of when a person is allowed to have behaved unethically or, or done something that's not on, then we look at the impact that has on the organization mm. and then act accordingly. Yeah. In this case of the VBS, where we looked into it, and we decided that, uh, well, the ANC said we should look into the matter and said that we should read the report from the Reserve Bank and the APC de Pompos report. And also looking into what's happening, for instance, where the bank is, that's in the Pompo at um, Toyando, the people's response. We came to the country that where it, the people who are implicated from the ANC should stand aside until things are, are cleared up. Yeah. Because uh, the impact they said is that well, people down there, many say that well, if the ANC doesn't do anything about this thing, then we're not going to vote for it and we're going to elections next year. Yeah. Yeah. And we thought that should happen. And in terms of reference, that, that been reference terms of reference that may have been given, anybody will find himself well, being implicated or is allied to have have done certain things that are not on, is duty bound to come to the IC to, to explain, for, explain himself or herself. Yeah. If he or she doesn't come, then they have to undergo the, the disciplinary process. Okay. In this case, well, they didn't come. And they were informed that even the SGO, the ANC, 
I told them that, that they should come and see us. They didn't come. But that well didn't, didn't matter because uh, we have seen already the impact it is having on the organization. So, so you're saying you did invite them to appear, but they did not come? No. no. But they, they were saying we, they we, were we, never invited? We, yes, we didn't invite them. They were referred to us by the NEC ANC to mm. come and see us. Yeah. And in terms of the terms of reference, once you are under a cloud, you have to come to the IC. And if you don't come, then you go the disciplinary process. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't make any judgment on whether they are guilty or not. All we are concerned with is that well, what they are alleged to have done impact neg negatively on the organization. And for that reason, we think that well, they should stand aside. Mm. Not that they are guilty, that those things are done by other processes, not us. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, when we look at, we look at the situation and we look at some of, you know, your findings, it, it, it appears, and a lot of people saying, that your work is being undermined, is that, you know, you've got different organizations and different divisions within the ANC, different provincial structures that are saying, no, 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 we don't agree with you. I mean, this is just not, this can't be possible. We don't agree with your findings and what you're saying. And um, it's almost undermining your work. How, how does it make you feel? It's not undermining because I'm they, they're just, they, I mean, they can have their own opinions. Like I'm saying, if you listen to radio and the press and so on, the majority of the people on the ground, I think support what we've done. That way it's, it's better to give them a chance because we're not using them either. You just give them a chance to clear up things. Yeah, yeah. And there will be people who obviously will not agree with us. Yeah. I mean, when we look at, at the structures within the ANC and some of the faces of the ANC, I mean, I'm just going to name some that have been impl implemented. And these are people in the front line. We talk Pule Mabe, Kadani Maklangu, Ace Makhishule, and many, many others. Um, doesn't the organization have a principle that says that somebody must step down until matters are resolved? to save the reputation of the ANC. That's what we're saying. That's what they've decided, for instance, that will- But they they're must, not agreeing they with you. stand aside. Mm. No, no we, we don't know whether they agree with us because we have made that recommendation. The NEC must decide you know, what they should do about it. So the, the individuals may, may differ, may disagree with us, mm. but it's possible that the NEC might agree with us or well, may not, very well not agree with us yeah. because after all, we make recommendations. So we're talking about some recent issues, but um, some other issues that the, that the committee may have handed over to them and looked into. Have there been any positive outcomes? Ha have they listened to you? Like I said, this only this, this last weekend, we had a, a workshop where we looked into this matter and also the former members of the Integrity Commission handed over their material. One hasn't gone through all of them. It's only this, this, this weekend. Mm. But I do know that, uh, for instance, if I mention names well, you won't mind. Where the case was put in the valley, yeah. it was an ambassador, he had to step aside. Not only from any structure, but to step aside from his job as an ambassador. He came back, I think two, three years back. Only last week or so, he was cleared. He has to come back. He, well, he's, now we even belong to the political committee of the ANC because he has been cleared, but he was able to stand back aside for mm. more than a year or two. Yeah, yeah. So that's one instance where, that's, that's one instance where that your work and advice has been yeah, taken, taken into account. Yeah. I mean, if we, look at, if we look at this issue now, and I think this is going to be a very big one, about a recent story about ANC senior leaders who formerly enjoyed some benefits from Busasa. Um, we talk uh, SG, Gwede Montache, uh, who went on to, to, to be minister, including Minister of Mineral Resources, Nomvula Mokonyane, Vincent Smith, also an MP. Will the Commission be looking into that, that issue? I must say right now I don't know because uh, according to the terms that were given, they say we only deal with cases that have been referred to us by the NEC. If they refer it to us, yes, we'll deal with, it. We'll deal with them. Mm. Okay. But as of now, they've not done so. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, we... we it, we struggle when we look into some issues with the ANC. I mean, for instance, you look at a, at, at a man like Tony Yengeni, who's been appointed the chair of corruption in the ANC after he was convicted of corruption. Um, and you look at this and you think, now, uh, how does something like this work? Corruption, integrity within the ANC, do you feel that, that, that this is taken seriously? What I can say is that we're the new terms of reference. 
It's a two-pronged process. There's this one where you deal with people who are alleged to have gone astray. But they've been realized that well, that won't really make, ensure that the ANC is an organization of integrity. There's the other wing is that well, the Integrity Commission now is tasked with the responsibility of going down the branches and workshopping, training members. So that at the end of the day, which is a long term, long term project actually, mm. we should be able to be certain that well, if we are, you, are, you come into the ANC, we we'll accept you and uh, we'll just be certain that well, we can deploy you anywhere. You are not going to disappoint us. But right now what happened that people joined the ANC coming from different social backgrounds and so on and so on. Yeah, yeah. And then you just have to pay a certain amount on the ANC. There's no process that like I, well, in the church, for example, where you should belong to, where you have a year for probation to find out whether you are a suitable person to be part of us. I think that we need to be instituted, that we don't just join because you paid money. Mm. But we say this way that well, this person has the potential to become an ANC member. Yeah. Because you might be coming from a situation where, let me take an example. You, you, you might be coming from a situation where you, maybe it's a church or a particular ethnic group, certain beliefs are held there, which might be, when you come to the ANC, you that, well, you, you, you cannot accept such things. I, I'll take extreme example. I'll call them extreme. An extreme example. In the ANC right now, it's even law in parliament. We say that, well, People of the same gender now can marry. But yeah, I'm definitely sure if you could say the ethnic uh, the tribes in South Africa, if you, 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 you can come to that family, you are a girl, you want to marry another girl, or a boy, you want another boy, it will be very difficult. But the ANC accepted that this is quite fine. Yeah. Question of abortion, some parents might find it not acceptable that you, you, a 13 year old kid should have the right to go and abort without their, their consent. But in the ANC, you said that well, that person now is, has the right to do so. So you have to, uh, to understand that well, you are no longer in your tribe, whatever the case might be. You are here in the ANC, and then there are certain things that you must accept as a matter of principle. If, yeah. Let's say we are voting in parliament. Then you say, I can't vote because well, it's against my, my conscience. Mm. It's a problem that because, I mean, your conscience now must be the conscience the base of the values of the ANC. Well, well, I mean, it should. Yeah, it, it should. I mean, one would think that that would that would work. Or take the way. question of non let, 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 let me take something. Okay, let, let's put a couple of the issues that you've okay. you've mentioned aside, and let's yeah. let's look at something that's being tackled today. In fact, you've got the issue of child and woman abuse under the spotlight by the president now, um, and, and and a whole function is being held around that. But you see, um, a case like former MP Mduduzi Manana, mm -hmm. which was brought before you. No, it wasn't. Again, you're denying it. This was never brought to you. Except if they didn't brought the former, the former, the Jay? former, te the former team. Of, yeah. Okay. So you're not part uh, of this no, before. No, so as far no, as you no. know, that case was never brought to you. Well, to this team. Okay. I, I will check the because like I'm saying, it's a I think you should I, because I, as far I, as, I as we know, it was brought to you. Well, and then, it was then sort of almost left for him to make his own choices. But I mean, you know, that should have been one issue where, I mean, it was caught on video, the evidence was there. And it, no, know. if it's like that, then that, that, that should have been I mean, if they have referred Should it. have, but unfortunately it wasn't. But if he let No, no, I'm saying if they have. Yes. If I check through their files, I find they have. Mm. We definitely look into it. Let's, let's talk about uh, um, the, uh, the issues around Batabile Dlamini. Th mm. There is another minister who, who we talk, I mean, she's an, an ANC, NEC member. She came out and she actually said that everyone has small and yana skeletons. Mm -hmm. Is this the truth? I mean, is this I, how we, we look I at the ANC? I, I, we must just accept that that's the way it is? I, I can't know whether that is true or not. I mean, everyone, that's a matter of research. I mean, I, I, can, I can't say that. On a word, I must accept that with everybody with a skeleton. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, if, uh, how do we take this integrity commission seriously? Do you, do you have any bite? Because that's, that's the criticism, is that you make I know people say you don't have power, I don't have bite. Yes, yes. I would like to say that well, we don't want to bite anybody. We don't want power. But you should be biting people, because some no, no. people need to, they need to learn that no, this is not the way you behave. Yeah, that's why I told you that well. For me, the fundamental thing, the biting part and the whatever, I think that's a short, 
short-term reactive measure. Okay. What might be done is that, well, the ANC members might be nurtured, might be schooled to, under, to know that, well, this is the way we should behave. Right now, we've not been doing so. People just join and then you come with your mannerisms and so on. Then yeah. when, you, when you do something that you think is wrong, then we say you're out of order. But we never really say, like, for instance, when I was born, I was put in a church and I grew up in Sunday school and knowing what is right and wrong. But we have not been doing that. Yeah. And I think that's what's more important. And I know the word is a difficult and a long-term thing. But this reactive thing, it's like the police. If you do that, people learn how to sophisticate it and hide and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. they would, it will be fear that will stop you from doing something wrong. It won't be conviction. Yeah, yeah. And we don't want people to act, act out of fear, but out of conviction. We leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us and uh, uh, bringing us onto, onto the program uh, to talk from the Integrity Commission's point of view. George Mashamba is the uh, ANC Ethics Committee Chair talking to us about the organization and its stance on ethics and integrity within its, in, within its members. Seven o'clock, let's get your news to you.